Hello, the game has started. It's my opponent to go first. I've got the Z. So I should be able to have a variety of moves available. I may not be able to play off the U as well. But it would be good to play the F off with the Z, both for score and for getting rid of a non bingoy tile and splitting up UF, which are non-synergetic. Great, and I can do that. I have fees. Let me see what that scores. So that's 42, which is a good score. UN has some synergy. Can I do something better? 42 points. Well, any play down column 6 getting the Z tripled is not going to score massively more than that. Even were such a word to exist, I can't see anything with the G. I'm going with this. Pretty good. Close to a bingo. Through a D, I would have Duanier. No, no real floaters on the board, just the G and the E, and they don't provide a bingo. So although this rack is close to a bingo, wow, great start for my opponent, 86 point bingo. He has provided a few floaters. Do any of them give me a bingo? The F, not great. Can't see anything with the A. The L, perhaps. Well, it would be quite high probability, but I'm not seeing anything. How about the C? Not seeing anything. And the G, I've got the ING ending. Okay, so this is a problematic situation because I've got all one point tiles, so I'm going to struggle to score. I need to sort the rack out as best I can. And the difficulty is sorting it out without scoring only about 10 points and having a similar rack next turn. It's Quite easy to have a run of two or three moves where you're scoring 10 to 15 points and that is rarely optimal. So in terms of leaving the best possible rack lead, maybe a play of OU for 10. And you can see just how vulnerable this rack is to vowels, especially with the floating A on the board and the F being non bingoy However, this rack goes very well with the G. So although a run of 10 point plays is bad, one could work out. So I think I'm going with this. I certainly do want to play off O and U. It's just a matter of should I be playing off more tiles? And I can't see a, play of, a way of playing off O and U and sticking the O underneath the Z. So I'm going with this. Okay, great. That has worked out. Potentially, I have de-airing in column 5. Do I have an alternative bingo? And I'm looking at the floaters in, in Falcons. Can't see anything with the F. Or the A. I would have Eurydinia with a U. Not seeing anything with the L, but there could be something, nor with the C. So all of my hopes are hinging on de-airing at the moment. Just wondering if I have a 7 with this rack. Very high probability if I do, but I'm not seeing it. So what if de-airing is blocked? Do I have a play across to the triple word square? Well, possibly, but it would wreck the rack. I do have a seven. I have Denarii. So nowhere for that right now, but it's good to have in mind in case my opponent provides an opening. And if Falcons hadn't been played, I could have stuck my D on the end of Fees. Ochre takes an H in front. 
I'm not sure it takes anything else. And I'm contemplating these floaters in Falcons again in case I've overlooked an eight. There's nowhere for Denarii and therefore the only bingo I've got which is currently playable is De'Aring. Well, I'm not seeing anything. The C prevents any parallel play of Denarii because it only takes an H after it. And Ov takes an F and a T, neither of which I have. Okay, so opponent does block my De'Aring spot. Core takes an S. That doesn't help. And the S again serving its purpose of hampering parallel plays. Woff only takes an S, so I'm not bingoing right now. Just looking at this ZE spot, I think I do need to split up the eyes. Otherwise I could play add in that spot. 25 points. Maybe I will have to do that. I, I'm just a bingo behind and there are still a ton of tiles to come, including one blank. How about playing parallel to Falcons and there, but thereby opening up column 13? So I certainly do want to play off an, an I. Gosh, tricky. Playing off AI is just hopeless. It just invites my opponent to play through the F and to, to block the board up. I could play AD down here, but then that's keeping duplicate I. And I haven't seen anything across from the end. Well, I have Niner. Keeping AID pretty atrocious. This board is, is super tight, just not very many scoring opportunities. So what about a play through the F, opening up a bingo lane in row B and also in column 14? And I could get 20 points by playing Denarii. I wonder if my opponent's got an S given that he's played core. It's possible. Still three S's out there. So what about Infra? That is so bad compared to the... I'm just comparing the Rackley with what I, I could have. If I kept the best possible Rackley, which would probably be Ride. Okay, I'm playing AI. I'm going to keep a good Rackley. And see what happens. I have Dextrin and Aid. I'm expecting that to be blocked, my, but my opponent may struggle to block it without opening up a new lane. And I was going to say I had a nice X spot underneath Fees, but I burned my A, so I don't have Axe, which is a shame. It wouldn't have been right to hang on to the A just in the hope of drawing an X. There is only one X in the bag. However, that X does guarantee me 25 points next turn. Dextrin takes... An E after it, I think. Possibly not. Yes, it does. So it takes an E and an S. I have Nixed in row H for over 40 points, which is good. I only, I only trail by 60.
only an S goes after WAF, so that row isn't particularly helpful to me at the moment. Ochre is an unlikely component of a word reaching one of these triple word squares. Fax is good, but that's unlikely to be available if dextrin is blocked. We've both spent a while on these opening moves, but that's quite often the right thing to do because the opening moves can influence the whole of the rest of the game. Now I've just noticed that I can play Dextrin higher up in column 13, making Fax and 8. I had previously identified it could make Aid, so if that remains available. I'll have a big score. And my opponent may have a bingo which plays in column 3, and not one elsewhere, in which case he'll probably play in column 3. Opponent plays, Gob for 28, he has blocked both Dextrin spots, Fab only takes an S after it. Although I have IN, I don't have an ING play. So opponent now 90 points in the lead. And, well he has created this really good lane in row, row A, I don't have a bingo there. But do I have a non-bingo play? Well, I can't see one, and I would like to play off the X. So I have a choice. I play. I could play next. Forty-two, or X, for twenty-five. A seventeen-point difference. How useful is this rack leave? Well, with the G it's pretty useful, but that could easily go, and if opponent simply plays a, a five letter play through there, I could be stuck with a bingo and nowhere to play it. Whereas if I play next, I am keeping the board open at the expense of trashing the rack. However, I am providing an E, which is good for my all consonant rack leave, and I'm retaining an N, so if I draw one of these I's, I could have an ING play. I think Nixed is the better play. I draw no vowels, so suddenly my rack has gone from being very bingo-y, actually comprising a bingo, to being a long way away from one. However, I have the Y, which is a quasi- Vowel. So there should be some some plays available. Great, just 18 points for my opponent. So what's the best way of sorting this out? I'm looking at the E because that's an obvious place to, to look when you haven't got any vowels. Although I do have Y on my rack. And it would be nice to leave the E alone. However, I don't think I can do that. Well, it's a shame to disrupt all of these, these nice floaters. Can't see anything down from the Z. I could play Will. That's an interesting play. It scores 13 points. It opens up a new bingo lane. It retains four consonants. That can't be best. So, do I have a high-scoring play in column 14? I can see Thewey, but I'd like to get two high-scoring tiles on these triple letter squares if I can. So, 
So Thuey 24, and that's a pretty tight board. However, a lot of tiles to come, and there's still this column 3 bingo lane. But only 24 points. I could play Rye then, but then nothing gets tripled of my scoring tiles. Can't see anything down from the E. Well, I don't like this, but I am going with Thuey for 24. I draw a couple of vowels. But no, no bingo on this rack. I've got a, a U for going after the Y. I can't see a six letter play. Still no A or O for going underneath the Z. Yep, opponent is looks like he's got all the vowels. So the best I can see in column 15 is unbid, which is not a great play. Uh, I could play Zimb, but that's keeping a U. Nothing to go between A and AI. I'm quite tempted to play Zimb because I want to open the board up. Column 8 not particularly useful with only a vowel being able to go to the left of the B. And any play down there is going to create new floaters. And the rack leave does have some synergy. So Zimb for 17. Can I do better? This doesn't feel great. I'm going with this. Okay, I see an E. Can't see... A bingo here, a 7 or, or an 8, but I suspect there may be some 8s. So what about through the B or the M? I don't think unrhymed is good, R-H-I-M. So do I have a 6 letter play beginning with the U, especially with the H doubled? I don't think unhide is good. Or an air. A play could also begin en. Or just e rather. Am I missing any other floaters? Well, there's the l. Or falcons. Can't see anything there. So 14 for brunt. Now my eye can go underneath Zimb. So I could play Huey. 30 points, finally a half decent score, and a decent rack leave, and I'm opening bingo lanes. I'm going with this. Well, I have Renade as a 7. That doesn't play. Still three S's and a blank out there. And row three available as a seven letter lane ending an S. Very frustrating. So where can I score with my Y? And do I have anything down column 15? And I keep looking there just because that looks like a 40 point play. Well, I'm not not seeing anything. And in fact, very little on this board. I guess my Y can go above the U. And 
and the M is a floater. Can't see anything there, so I've just got YE, which would leave a decent rack leave of Ender. Still a lot of E's to come, so I could, could be swamped by them a little bit, but they're quite a manageable vowel. It's not usually a problem having two, and three isn't a disaster. Great, just the 10 points for my opponent. So I trail by about 40. He's taken my spot. But he has provided another one. Because Per takes a number of tiles after it, an R, an E from my rack. So do I have any plays beginning Y, E? Well, I have Yeed, but that doesn't reach the double word square. I have Renee, but that doesn't score hugely. Only 26 points. Does Renee have an anagram? And I note we're both pretty low on time with a lot of tiles to come. Do I have any plays beginning DR? Well, I'm thinking about playing Reedy. 28 points. An R only takes an E underneath, so if the opponent doesn't have an E, I could benefit from that spot. So, Reedy for 28. I still managed to dodge the S's, and I don't have a bingo. Through an I, I would have Vintager, but I trail by 12. If opponent doesn't play in row O, I've got Grave, so I certainly can take that spot. And opponent just playing off the two tiles. Okay, just the 33, that could have been a lot worse. So I trail by about 40. How to sort this rack out. I guess the G and the V are the problem tiles. So I could play Grave. And I'm inclined to play Grave because I'd like to turn over a lot of tiles with these S's and blank out there. Column 3 is super hot with only 25 tiles in the bag and 4 really hot tiles. I think it's imperative to turn over a lot of tiles. And there's a lot of E's out there, so no problem in burning the one that I have. Grave for 23. Is there a better spot to play this? I'm just noticing this A underneath the premium square. What about a play with the N instead of the R? No, I'm going with this. Not great, I draw the Q. I do have an S. So I'd like to burn this Q as soon as possible. Can't use the U of OU. Wow, nice bingo for my opponent. However, I'm still in good shape because I can play Trank. I've got a decent rack leave. I'm getting 28 points and column 3 still available. Trank for 28. Wow, have I managed to avoid having a bingo again? I think I have. Can't see anything with this rack. Very few floaters on the board. The G doesn't go well with it. I trailed by a bingo, but there are still bingo lanes. Nine tiles in the bag, including a blank. And I can now burn one S to pluralise Trank, and opening up a new bingo lane, so I could play Discs. Well, that would burn both blanks, so I don't want to do that. I could play Dimes. Is there a way of getting an M or C? And doubled and only using one S. Can't see a play. Well, 
Well, I guess dimes. Well, dimes doesn't get the M double, but that might be the, my best option. Okay, opponent blocks row three. Elated, I think, takes an M and a P in front. I've got an M. So, I should therefore play dices. Keeping the M back, keeping an S back for score, which I'd now need to use in conjunction with the M, and creating a bingo lane in column one. However, I'm emptying the bag by doing that, so can't be best. Three tiles in the bag, I need to play off two. And open a new bingo lane. So I guess C and S are the two I'd like to play off. Keeping the M for, well, let me just check, malated. I don't want to hang on to a hook which doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Let me just check. Palleted. That's good. And there's a P and a blank out there. Four minutes on my clock. And I trail by 80. I'm thinking about playing Seaman in column 8, 21 points, 278. Opponent must block that in row A, and that's the trouble, there isn't a second bingo lane. I'm just trying to think of a way of creating two lanes. trouble is with an S and a blank out there, I can't set up the S's on my own rack. Now, row C is a bingo lane. I could play meds, mix rather, setting up a new bingo lane in column 2. An opponent can't block column two and row C. So I'm going with with this only 14 points. I can't catch my opponent without a bingo. 42 points for dimes, 299. 14 points is going to take me to 271. Yeah, I think this has got to be slightly more winning than playing dimes. Or discs. Let me see what disc scores. Forty-eight points. I think I'm going to play this and hope that I can go out in one next go. Discs for 48. Well, I can't, and my opponent is going to bingo. He's got a great final rack. I'm assuming he's going to bingo. He can put his P in front of elated and end in S. Well, I haven't seen a play, but I think there probably is one. And there probably is one in column one, ending ED as well. He's got four minutes to find it. And he'll get quite a handsome count back from me for 28 points in total. So what does opponent have? The highest scoring play will be column one, I think. I think he has pistoled. Uh, 
and poetized, so he has a choice of bingos. Does he have one in column three getting the P doubled just out of interest? I don't think toppies is good. Yep, there goes pistoled. So, the final score. 305 to me, 449 to my opponent, a winning margin of 144 points. So, well done to my opponent. Let's see what I missed. It was my opponent to go fast. Great rack for him, he has the blank. Plays gonk. Now I play fees for 42. Opponent bingos. And I have this rack. And nothing great. Urii A12, putting a U in the middle of row A doesn't feel great. So I played OU for 10, keeping a really good rack leave. But is AEINR 13 points better than Urii? Sorry, 20, 13 points better than NO. It's likely to be close, but I think Urii also has that negative factor of putting the U in row A. So I'm not sure about that. I still like my play. Horrible rack for my opponent. Plays core. Wow, I thought that was a bingo coming up. It wasn't. So I had Denarii and Dieering blocked. And I played AI for 13, which is only 11 po points worse than Dineric. And it, it ha does have a good Rackley, so I still like my play. Go up for 28. And now, I10. Extend, okay. I played Nyx for 42, and I still like that. Horrible rack for my opponent. He has all these vowels. Plays Agio. And I have all consonants. I thought about Y. But not in this spot, making Hoka and U. If I'd seen that, I may have played it. Four consonants is bad, but 28 points is a good score. Instead, I played Thuey. Only four fewer points. So from pure score and rack leave, Thuey is better because that fourth consonant is quite damaging. However, y would have, playing Y would have left alone this floating E. So there are merits with both. Opponent's rack. Still got a few vowels. He's got torture on his rack. or No, he hasn't, but he's close to a bingo. Plays Oxo. And wow, Oxonium, where's that? Ah, oh, gosh, down from Oxo. That would have been quite a fancy word to spot. Instead, I play Zim for 17. Opponent plays Brunt. And I have Unhired. Nowhere for it. M11. Hued, making UH. Yeah, nice Rackley, but it's killing the board because nothing goes under UH. However, Zim takes an I and an S, mainly an S, and Core takes an S, so Hude isn't a disaster. However, Huey, three more points, and it's a better rack leave, so I like my play. Not a great rack for my opponent. He plays... So he played Purr from this. Tricky. And now I have this rack, Red Eye N2. Oh, Red Eye and He. Okay. Instead, I played Reedy. Possibly Needy would have been better. Reed and I also available. Yeah, I think Needy better than Reedy. But Reedy has merits in that only an E goes underneath it. A lot of vowels go underneath N. Opponent plays Liver. Now, L3 Grave, that was my play. And now, we were close. 30 points between us, 22 points between us. And the opponent has this excellent bingo, 10i. 
which was a great spot. I come back with Trank. And I'm, I'm just a bingo behind. My opponent plays elated, and now this is a tricky spot. I'm still a bingo behind, but it's a big, a big bingo we score between us. And there are only three tiles in the bag. Emix was available for 51. I played discs for 48. And the option to that is, is just playing off two tiles somewhere. And Sim is available here, making Ochres and M for 29 points. Possibly the play. But not with this rack for my opponent, however, because the J being in the bag. Because I'm not going to bingo with the J. And opponent has these bingos to choose from. And a Topies was the play which made Palleted and score for 88. And that looks like it outscores plays in, in column 1. Yeah, just 83 for, for pistols. So, pretty brutal game. Huge win for my opponent. Quite frustrating for me. I felt I was close to a bingo. Couldn't get them down. And then my racks matured away in, in the wrong way, away from a bingo. So the game was not really within my grasp at the end, especially with the J in the bag. Anyway, there are games like this, and that was one of them. So I hope you enjoyed watching that game and I will see you next time.